Hello everybody, in this video I'll be showing you two ways in order to combine any object or person with any background of your choosing. First we'll be starting things off with the easy way, which is to use the magic wand tool. Now this is really only viable when you actually have a background that is very different or a solid color as compared to the object you want to isolate. The reason for this is because the magic wand tool selects like colors based on the threshold. Now if I am to lower the threshold here, which is what we would want to do to only select the black, then it will select less colors that are different than the one I selected. In other words, if we have a threshold of zero, it's only going to select black colors and as we increase the threshold, it's going to target a few other colors that are very similar to that black. Now as interesting as it is to select and remove part of the woman in this picture as well, it's not really what we're shooting for. So in order to have this work, we're going to need to drop the threshold down dramatically. So now by lowering the threshold, I'm able to select more or less just the black. You can see a couple defects somewhere in the image because the, the background isn't perfectly black. This is the same kind of issue you'd run into if you had a green screen and it wasn't perfect for live video production. However, here, since it's literally a few dots and it's a static image, we can just manually remove the rest. Now, a minute ago, you will have noticed that the black background was replaced with a white background, and that's because the layer doesn't have a layer channel yet. So in order to have this work, you have to right click on the layer and hit add alpha channel. Now this time, when we remove the background using the magic wand, it just replaces it with transparency. From here, as I mentioned, we just need to use the eraser tool to get rid of these few defects. And then we can drag any background image we want into this uh, GIMP document. And we'd be able to have this woman basically transplanted into that background, almost as if she was there. Now, although this will look pretty good, and it does accomplish our effect, to make this truly convincing, you would have to spend a lot more time on this uh, to really manipulate the images and uh, possibly mess with the perspectives, make it so that it really seems like the woman is there. You'd probably want to make her smaller too, obviously. But for our purposes, this does demonstrate how you can basically take any image, and as long as the background is easily selectable with the magic wand tool, all you would need to do is magic wand out the background and then put the object or a character or person over any image you need. But now we're going to go ahead and do a harder example where the magic wand tool doesn't precisely work. As you can see in the background of this image though, although it is dark, there's a lot of extra little details to it like poles and objects in the background itself instead of just a solid black background. Although the magic wand tool would work to an extent here, it'll be very difficult for everything to be selected in the background or enough to where we wouldn't really need to use eraser or other tools like the lasso. Now that's not to say I wouldn't recommend starting with the magic wand tool. If you can isolate a good portion of your document and as long as it's very distinct from the uh, object you're trying to isolate, like the white shirt here, you should be able to get some good progress in with the magic wand tool. With other images, it might just be too similar in order to get any progress with the magic wand tool, however. So with the magic wand tool, I'm going to continue removing the background. However, once again, by just adding the image into a new GIMP layer, it doesn't have an alpha channel. So in order for this to work properly, you're going to have to right click the layer and add an alpha channel so that the background can show through. Now going through the same steps as before, as we start using the magic wand, we can see that the background comes into focus. However, as I mentioned, with this image and other images like this, it's not going to be a perfect transition. So we need to show the other way of actually handling this. And that's going to be through diligent hard work using the eraser tool and similar tools like the lasso to get rid of the rest of this extra background from the original image. Now here you'll notice I'm getting rid of the purple that's bordering on the skin of this person. And what happens when you use the magic wand tool, if it's not a perfect transition from one color into the other, is that on those borders, sometimes the colors will stay. So by using the eraser tool, we can get it to look much more accurate. Tied the fact that there was ever an original background that was separate from this new landscape background. This is where you need to zoom in really far into your document and just take your time with it. 
in many ways, this is very similar to the process of removing acne or other defects from a photo. The more time you spend with it, the better results you're going to get, but there isn't always necessarily a easy, free, quick to use answer like the magic wand tool. However, for any of the areas that isn't bordering the important part of this girl in the image, you can just use an enlarged eraser tool to slam out a lot of chunks at once. So make sure you don't make your work harder than it needs to be. Only get really focused when it's in an area that is actually going to show in the final image. In other words, those border areas where it needs to look good and you don't want to accidentally remove information that should be in the final image. To demonstrate the lasso tool, uh, when you use the lasso tool and you choose a point and then you choose a second point, it's going to draw a selection line between those two points. And you can keep going with as many lines based on the points as you want until you reconnect it back to the original point and then you have a selection which could look something like a polygon. But what's nice about the tool is that it gives you quite a fine level of control over what your selection is going to be. So selecting for this elbow here is not actually that hard. I just need to choose a bunch of different points um, going along the surface of the elbow and the woman's torso. The more points you select, the more precise the selection is going to be get as far up there as I can and then when I have more or less the pattern of the outside drawn using the lasso tool I can just reconnect it finally to the initial point and delete everything that was inside there. So just a few more points to select here and then we can drive back to the original point and delete this whole section which will take care of a large portion of what we actually need to do. So you can see that the lasso tool is quite effective and easy to use. Not only that, but it does also allow us to take care of removing some of the purple border that was showing in the original image. Now here it's mostly a process of cycle and repeat. Look at all the parts of your original image and make sure that you take care of removing them. If you aren't sure if something's in the foreground or the background, you can toggle the background layer so that only the original image is showing. And that should make it a lot easier to see visibly with the checkered transparent background. If you have trouble using the lasso on the border of the overall canvas, you can try using the eraser tool there. And for everywhere else, you can use the lasso tool to make it pretty precise, clean up with the eraser as needed. And if you put enough time into it, you should get it to the point where the background is completely removed and all you're left with is the original object that you wanted to transplant into another image. So remember, start with the magic wand tool and see how much you can remove there. If you can't remove everything, you can start breaking out the lasso tool and the eraser for fine tuning. Depending on how much time you put into it, you'll get different variations of results. You may need to mess around with the perspective tool a little bit to make it look like it really belongs in the image. But for the most part, that's all you need to do to combine any object with any background. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and until my next one, I'll see you then.